How crazy is this? So this is a ginseng root. And on a recent trip to China, someone told me how much money these roots can actually go for. Now there's actually a Business Insider article here talking about a ginseng root that was recently sold for half a million US dollars. Is there real scientific benefit to a lot of these medicinal herbs or is it just kind of traditional folk practice and folk wisdom? Now as a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and as someone who uses these traditional medicinal herbs in formulas every single day in my private practice, I can share these herbs really do live up to the hype. Now in this video, we're going to discuss seven of the most powerful healing herbs in the world that come from traditional Chinese medicine. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master the Day. So let's jump in. Medicinal herb number one is ginseng or renchen in Chinese. So this is ginseng root and you can see, I mean, this one has a lot of bug damage because it's been sitting in my pantry for years. But ginseng root in particular in traditional Chinese medicine is often, believe it or not, used for digestive problems. So for example, we use it for a condition called spleen qi deficiency, which often really more relates to pancreatic enzymes as well as low immunity. So people, for example, that have fatigue, bloating, typically more of a pale complexion, tend towards a little bit lower appetite, very easily get a food baby after meals, and are more prone to loose stools and gas and that kind of thing. Also, low immunity like we talked about. So this is a part of some formulas that can be used to help improve the immune function so that in cold and flu season, it decreases the chances that you get sick. Now, in terms of the biomedical research on ginseng, one of the most profound effects it has is besides on the digestive system, like helping with pancreatic enzyme production, it also has a very, very strong effect on the HPA axis. So this particular physiological pathway in the body is related primarily to chronic stress and chronic stress hormones. So for example, ginseng is a favorite herb for naturopathic doctors and functional medicine doctors to use for issues like anxiety, depression, insomnia, and basically anything that can be related to chronic nervous system dysfunction from stress hormones. Medicinal herb number two is cinnamon twig or cinnamon bark. So cinnamon twig is called guajir in Chinese and the bark is called rogue. So how do we use this from a traditional medicine point of view? Cinnamon twig is primarily used for issues with the heart and the nervous system. So for example, a classic cinnamon twig or cinnamon bark pattern is elevated heart rate, anxiety, palpitations, and then let's say something to do with the spirit as we call it, like insomnia. That's a traditional pattern that is very, very effectively treated by formulas that are very high dosages of cinnamon bark or cinnamon twig. We tend to say that the cinnamon bark is more useful for basically helping the nervous system drop it down a couple notches, like for sleep issues. And the twig typically is a better regulator of cardiovascular issues, palpitations, chest pain, heart rate variability, or tachycardia, typically racing heart. Now from a biomedical point of view, what cinnamon bark and cinnamon twig primarily work on are the fight or flight systems in the body. For people that are having the chronic stress response, where they're experiencing, for example, they normally had a normal heart rate, and now they have an elevated heart rate. They normally had a normal heart rate, and now they're having heart palpitations throughout the day or throughout the night. They normally slept well, now they're waking up in the night or they can't fall asleep. So primarily, cinnamon twig and cinnamon bark work heavily on what people would tend to call adrenal fatigue, like the lay person. And it is one of the most commonly prescribed in my practice. And side note, formulas that are high in cinnamon twig and cinnamon bark are the number one most common formulas that I use to get people off antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. Medicinal herb number three is called penelia or bansha in Chinese. Now, how is it used in traditional medicine? So bansha is used for very sticky, thick phlegm. And an example of that would be for someone who has chronic acid reflux. You know, a lot of people with chronic reflux or a Barrett's esophagus, if it's quite severe, they will actually chronically be producing sputum. So they're really clearing the throat a lot or they're having acid reflux and they're clearing their throat or they're coughing after meals. Now this is a chronic dysfunction of the digestive system where the mucous membranes are always producing excessive mucus and phlegm. On one side, we call a deficiency version of that to be just spleen chi deficiency where people are producing lots of mucus. But in the context of our modern world, lots of people come in for acid reflux and indigestion. Bancha with dry ginger, are the number one combo to functionally reverse that. Meaning to get people off of their PPIs or famotidine or the varying kinds of acid reflux medications they're taking. From a biomedical point of view, what Bansha Penelia primarily does is it does work on stomach acid, mucous membranes, and also is amazing for brain chemistry issues. 
The fourth powerful medicinal herb is called astragalus or huangqi. Now in traditional medicine, we use huangqi for a lot of different purposes. Number one, huangqi can be used for general exhaustion and general immunity. So there are formulas. One is called huangqi jianzhongtang, which is huangqi build the middle decoction. Very commonly used for children who have failure to thrive. It can be used for people who easily get colds and flus in the winter season. I'll have patients, let's say, take a formula for December and January, typically when their kids and their family get sick. And I have women coming in that'll say, it's the first year my whole family got sick, I didn't get anything. And there's real scientific evidence behind that. So while it does have an amazing effect on the immune system, it's secondarily used for fatigue and for exhaustion. Also a common scenario is we use it for the fatigue and exhaustion that comes from cancer treatments, from chronic chemotherapy that people undergo as part of treating their cancer in the recovery stage or during to actually improve their outcomes and get their strength back much, much, much faster. Now, when you look at the biomedical research on Huangqi, it has both a very, very potent effect on the immune system functioning and secondarily, there's fascinating research on using Huangqi in cancer, right from websites that are in conventional medicine like Johns Hopkins and the CDC. This fascinating research on Huangqi and the effect it has on cancer cells. Powerful medicinal herb number five is called Scutellaria, and it sounds similar. This is called Huangqin instead of Huangqi. So Huangqin, Scutellaria, we use for lots of reasons in Chinese medicine. It is one of the most famous herbs for a reason. Number one, we use it for lots of inflammatory conditions. So for example, things that can involve inflammation like gallbladder and liver issues, or even lots of people who have acid reflux. So formulas high in Huangqin, like Xiao Chai Tang, Minor Bupleurum Decoction, or Ban Xia Xie Tang, Ban Xia Purge the Heart Decoction, are two of the most commonly used formulas for any gallbladder issue, gall stones, gall sludge. These two formulas are the god of functionally reversing I don't even know if I can legally say that, but functionally getting back to where you were before, wink, wink, these issues. I treat lots of people with gallbladder attacks, gallbladder sludge, acid reflux. These formulas are the god of taking care of this. These herbs are also very commonly used for acute viral infections, bacterial infections involving sore throats, you know, strep, influenza, etc. cetera. Xiao Chai Tang, minor bupleurum decoction, and herbs high in huangqin are very frequently used. But like anything, you have to be careful. Don't ever take single herbs from Chinese medicine because herbs that are liver protective or kidney protective can also damage them in high doses. So never self-prescribe these. Do not recommend it. On the biomedical side, huangqin has lots of antipyretic properties. So it's typically used for fevers and inflammation. Medicinal herb number six is called coptis or huanglian in Chinese. If you've never seen it, when you decoct it, it produces a deep yellow, almost staining color. Now that's due to the fact that it's high in a compound called berberine, which is very trendy these days. Huanglian is typically used for bacterial and fungal conditions. So we use it in conditions that we say are damp heat. Now you can almost envision damp heat, right? Think of athlete's foot or jock itch, areas of the body that are kind of wet and damp throughout the day. And then you can get predisposed to fungal conditions, itching and that kind of thing. So we use it for conditions like SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Coptis is extremely well studied for its antibacterial properties, as well as even what specific species of candida fungus it can treat. It's pretty cool, actually, if you research it. One of my other videos here has that exact research on uh, candida and yeast issues and SIBO. Additionally, it's used to treat fungal issues. Athlete's foot, jock itch, bacterial vaginosis, women that take antibiotics and afterwards they have yeast infections, itching and discharge. This is one of the herbs in the formula that is very, very powerful. And on the biomedical science side, it is very antibacterial, very antifungal, and high in berberine. Medicinal herb number seven is Ganoderma or Reishi. Now there's a great quote I found in a research paper that said, Lingzhi is a miraculous king of herbs, and it's attributed to the Chinese civilization in the BC era. So since 200 BC, it's been documented that Lingzhi is a special herb, which is pretty cool. It's an amazing testament to the longevity of Chinese medicine and the Chinese culture. Now I want to jump over to this research paper here and show you something. So this paper is called The Nutritional Profile and Health Benefits of Ganoderma as Functional Foods, Current Scenario and Future Perspectives. And one of the pieces of research they talk about, they mention that according to bimillennial beliefs, Lingzhi can promote health and longevity, but it was also considered a combination of a spiritual force and a source of immortality. Moreover, the Japanese people have regarded this mushroom as a 10,000 year mushroom. Now in traditional medicine, 
especially when you look at one of our oldest books, the Shenlong Ben Saojing, the Divine Farmer's Materia Medica. Ling Zhi Reishi has always been prized typically for its anti-anxiety and its effects on the spirit. So when we talk about anti-anxiety qualities and really the anti-stress qualities of it, very commonly it's used not only for nervous system issues, nervous system dysregulation, issues with the HPA axis. It's often commonly used in cancer treatment as well, but in general, it's an herb strongly associated with the spirit, meaning the psycho-emotional state of the person and the patient, as well as with longevity in particular. And from the biomedical point of view, lots of studies have confirmed it as anti-cancer, anti-diabetes, anti-diabetic, and cardioprotective qualities inherent in the plant. So it's a very special mushroom linger. Now there are also four other practices you can do from traditional Chinese medicine that are powerful for healing. And I've put them together in a free guide, which is the first link right below this video. Four daily rituals that could potentially help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. In addition, I take on a limited number of new patients every single month in my practice in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. And you could read more in the bio about my clinic and how to contact me. And on top of that, I've put together a brand new Healing with Traditional Chinese Medicine online course. This is because I know so many of you will never be able to come see me in person in my clinic. And this online program is one of the best ways to learn more about practices you can do based on your condition and your interests. And it's also one of the best ways I'm trying to keep this channel sponsor and ad free as much as I can. So check those links out below. And before you go, there's a very good related video here on other medicinal herbs and practices you can use.